In this video, I'm going to be going over every single feature of Create Big Cannons from a creative perspective. So I'm not going to be going over how to cast and bore out cannons. Uh, you can just check the uh, in-game ponders for that. To start off, what is Create Big Cannons? Well, it is a mod that adds these giant cannons that you can use in your Minecraft world. And as you can see, it actually is a Create add-on, so you'll need a compatible version of Create mod for this to work. These cannons can have tons of different types, and they can fire all kinds of shells, as I'm about to show you. So jumping straight into how it works, the first thing we're going to go over is the cannon mount. And this is basically uh, the base of what all cannons are built off of. This is a block with a normal 1x1 hitbox. It has two shaft inputs on either side, and it has a front and a back with these two symbols. On the side with the hammer, you're going to give it a redstone signal to assemble the cannon once you built it. And the side with uh, this controller looking thing, you're going to give it a redstone signal to actually fire the cannon. You'll notice that two blocks above the uh, normal hitbox, there is another shaft. It's where you're going to build uh, your cannon. So let's do that real quick. And now that we have a cannon in place, once you flick the lever on the side with the hammer, it's going to assemble it, as you saw there. And then once we load it, we can fire it with this side. Now let's actually go over the anatomy of a cannon. So as you're about to see, they can be made from tons of different materials, but they all have a few things in common. The first part is the breech. And this is basically how the shell is going to get in and out of the cannon. And this can be uh, multiple different types, as I'll go over later. Um, the next part is the chambers, and this is where the propellant sits, whether it be power charges or a cartridge. The last part is the barrel, which holds your shell or shot, and then it also uh, guides the shot out of the cannon. Now, if we want to turn the cannon, we have these two shaft inputs on the other side, and we can give them a bit of kinetic force to turn the cannon whichever way we want. Now if we want to turn the cannon left and right, we're going to need this block, which is the yaw controller. And this has a special output on the top, this is not a shaft, and then on the bottom it has a normal shaft for a kinetic input. And this is going to go on the bottom of our cannon mount, and once we give it a little bit of uh, rotational force, we'll see that the cannon will turn to left or right. Now let's go over the cannon types. So first off we have nether steel, which is a special material added by Creepy Cannons. And this uh, type of cannon will be able to handle 8 powder charges. This type of cannon also only has the screw breech uh, available to it, which I'll go over in a second. Steel cannons can handle up to 6 charges, and the steel material is not added by Crate Bay Cannons. You'll need to get a mod like uh, Crate Alloy to add recipes for that. Steel cannons can have 3 different kinds of breaches, which is the screw breech, the sliding breech, and the quickfire breech. These bronze cannons can handle up to 4 powder charges, and they also have 3 kinds of breaches, being the sliding breech, the quickfire breech, and the normal breech end. Cast iron cannons can handle up to two power charges, and they also have three kinds of breaches, being the sliding breach, the quickfire breach, and the normal cannon end. The wood or log cannons are mostly a joke. They can handle up to one power charge, but they almost always explode even at that. So I would never recommend using them. The raw iron cannons can handle up to one power charge, and they have two kinds of breaches, one being the uh, normal cannon end, and the other being the drop mortar uh, cannon end, which I will go over in a second. Now, to go over the breach types, we have the screw breach, which is found on the nether steel and the steel cannon types. And basically how this works is that in its close position, it is going to be attached to the rest of the cannon, so you can't move it, and you can't load the cannon. But, when you give it some rotational force in the right direction, it will unscrew, and now you can move this out of the way and load your cannon. The quickfire breach found on steel, bronze, and cast iron cannons is special because it do not load it when the cannon is disassembled, the cannon actually needs to be assembled for you to use it. So you can see we have assembled cannon here, and we can open and close it by using right click. To load the cannon, all we need to do is open the breach, and then right click using a shot or shell of our choice, and then a uh, cartridge or power charge. And then we can close it and fire the gun. Sliding breaches are similar to screw breaches, in the sense that you cannot load them when they're closed, and to open them, you just need to give it a little bit of rotational force in the right direction, and we'll see that it opens. Uh, however, do know that these do not give you the full strength of the cannon. So on uh, the steel cannon, for example, which can handle up to 6 charges, the breach can only handle 4 charges. So the maximum on a steel sliding breach cannon is still going to be 4 charges. However, the advantages are that it is faster to open and close and faster to load than a screw breach. For these cannon ends, there's no way to move them or open them or anything like that. The idea is that they just sit on the end of your cannon and then you go load them uh, through the front of the cannon instead of the back. Now to go over actually loading a cannon, for example, we have here this uh, steel sliding breach on a steel cannon. Now, there's two ways of loading a cannon. The first way is going to be with the ramrod, which is a manual tool that allows you to push charges and shots in. So first we have the shot or shell, which obviously we want to come out that end. 
and then we have the power charges, which are going to be our propellant. So we'll do four of these. And the ramrod, all we need to do is click on the back of the power charge or shot, and it will slowly push it in. You can see that as a bit of a cooldown. Something to note with sliding breaches specifically is that even though it looks like we've just pushed all the charges in, the last charge we pushed in is actually right here. So now we, we couldn't pre-close the breach if we wanted to. All we need to do is push it one more block so the charge is actually where we need it to be, and then we can close the breach. Now, the other way of loading cannons is going to be using the uh, cannon loader. So here you have the cannon loader block, and we have the ram head, which is going to allow us to obviously ram the charges in. And behind it, we have some piston expansion poles, just like a mechanical piston from a normal crate mod. So all we need to do is get our charges and shot in place, and then with a little bit of rotational force, we can see that it pushes the charges in. And then make sure to retract it, and we can close the breach. Now let's go a little more in depth into all of the munition types. So first off, we have the power charge, which is going to be your main source of propellant. And what this does is it just explodes inside of the cannon and it pushes your shell out the other end. It's very simple and the most basic way of firing your cannon. Next up, we have the big cartridge, which basically holds four, up to four power charges in one block. And uh, I would really only recommend using this with the quick fire breach because you only have to uh, load one item. If you use this in a sliding or a screw breach or anything like that, then you'll be left with an empty cartridge after firing and you have to go and actually extract this out of the cannon, which is an absolute pain and not worth it. So under the shell types, we have four unfused kinds and a couple of fused kinds. So first off, we had solid shot, which is your most basic kind of ordnance. And this just flies out and it breaks blocks and damages entities, uh, that's all. The armor piercing shot is just like the solid shot, except it has more penetration so it will break more blocks before it stops. Next is something special called the mortar stone, which is basically a, just a big rock. And you can only propel this with up to two power charges or the equivalent of before it breaks just coming out of the barrel. However, to make up for this, the mortar stone travels farther uh, on two power charges than any of the other shells, and it also explodes on contact. The last unfused uh, shot type is the bag of grape shot, which um, bursts apart once it's fired, and it sends out a giant spray of grape shot, as the name suggests. It's not very good at breaking blocks, but it does do quite a bit of damage to entities, and it can break soft blocks like wood or wool. For the fused shell types, um, these are going to be a little bit different. You can see that they have a little spot on top of them uh, for a fuse. And what this does is it basically makes the shell explode um, under certain conditions. To go over those quickly, first we have the impact fuse, which will cause the shell to explode once it hits a block. Next we have the time fuse, which is really simple. It will make the shot explode uh, after a certain period of time. Then we have the proximity fuse, which will make the shot explode after it comes within a certain uh, set radius of a block. And finally, we have the delayed impact fuse, which will make a shot explode after it hits a block and then after a set period of time. For the shells themselves, first we have high explosive, which will just explode with a little bit more force than TNT once uh, the fuse goes off. Then we have the AP shell, otherwise known as APHE, um, armor piercing high explosive. And this will not only penetrate more blocks than high explosive, but it will also explode like high explosive. Keep in mind, though, that the APHE shell does not penetrate as much as the normal AP shell. Next up, we have the shrapnel shell, which when detonated will release a cloud of deadly shrapnel, um, similar to the grape shot, but it breaks more blocks and it does more damage. Next, we have the fluid shell, which when detonated will release a um, cloud of whatever you filled it with, um, being a fluid. So we can just fill it through the top with something like lava, water, or potions. And then once this explodes, this will um, let out a bunch of lava and set things on fire. Now we have the smoke shell, which when detonated will release a giant cloud of smoke to obscure yourself or enemies or something like that. Finally, we have the drop mortar shell, which was recently added, and it takes a fuse and it explodes. Um, and you can also load it conventionally like a normal shell, like all of these. However, the main thing is that you can fire it by hand uh, through a drop mortar uh, cannon end, which I'll show it right here. So here we have our raw iron cannon with a raw iron drop mortar end. And once you assemble it, it'll look something like this. And instead of firing or loading it normally, we're just going to take the drop mortar shell, drop it in, and it will fire by itself out the other end. So now let's go over auto cannons, which work a lot differently than the big cannons. So we have three kinds, we have the cast iron, bronze, and the steel types. There's no nether steel, there's no raw iron, 
uh, anything like that. The way they work is that they come in three parts. We have the recoil spring, which is not actually necessary. You can replace with a barrel if you want. We have the breech, which is necessary. And then we have the barrel. So how do we load the auto cannon? Well, it actually shoots uh, using items. So we'll need some way to get the items into the cannon mount. We can use either a hopper or a shoe, um, of which I prefer the shoot, uh, just because it moves more items. And if you use one hopper, then it actually can't keep up with the rate of fire of the auto cannon. Another way is using this nifty uh, auto cannon ammo container. When you right click holding it, you'll open up this GUI and you can add your auto cannon rounds into these slots. And you can also change the spacing of the tracer rounds using this slider here. So if you want to uh, say fire a tracer every four rounds, you can just do it like that. The auto cannon takes three kinds of munitions. We have the armor piercing round, we have the flak round, and we have the machine gun round. And for the flak round, keep in mind this explodes, so you need to fuse it just like a big shell by crafting a fuse with the round in a crafting table or in your inventory. I'm just going to put some rounds in here into the barrel. They're going to go through a chute into the mount, and then once we fire it, they just come out of the other end. Now, if we want to use the auto cannon ammo container, we can open it up, and we can only put in 16 auto cannon cartridges. Um, however, we can put in up to 64 full machine gun rounds in the container. Now, to add it, we're just going to right click on the breach, and it will be attached just like that. Keep in mind, while the uh, AP round breaks blocks and the flak round uh, explodes, of course, the machine gun round only does energy damage. It will not break blocks at all. So guys, that's going to pretty much do it for this tutorial video. I uh, hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you in the next video.